Hello everyone. This is the fifth radiograph for the summer seminar course. In this video, in next few minutes, we'll review one single intraoral radiograph to evaluate a fractured root. This radiograph is shared with me by Dr. Syed Attar, an endodontist who was a faculty member in our school and is now in private practice in Texas. We have some findings with both the central incisors. Let's spend a little longer time with the left central incisor. Several years ago, this tooth had fractured. The patient picked up the fractured crown and pushed it back into the socket. He has remained asymptomatic except for discoloration. I wish I could show you colors on a radiograph. For now, we'll just stay with different shades of gray. We can see distinct separation of the root fragments. These fragments are not aligned. You can also see what appears to be the pedial space. Also, there is a roughly circular mixed density area. Can this be internal or external root resorption? I also do not see the pulp canal. Compare this with the right central incisor. The pulp canal is distinct. The apical pedial space seems little wide. Let's review what we learned earlier about traumatic injury to teeth. The injury to teeth may be three types. Concussion, luxation, and avulsion. Concussion. In concussion, there is no displacement or loosening of a tooth. There is crushing injury to the adjoining areas. And early radiographic changes may be minimal. In a few weeks or a few days, you might see a widened pedial space. So it makes very good sense to call the patient back for a new radiographic examination in a few weeks or a few days. Long-term effects of concussion is that the pulp could be sclerosed or there could be necrosis and there could be periapical lesions. With luxation, there is dislocation of the tooth. The tooth could be intruded or could be extruded or the tooth can be displaced laterally, lingually or palatally, or buccally or labially. Early radiographic observation, again it's widened pedial space if the tooth is extruded, a narrow pedial space in the apical region if the tooth is intruded. Long-term effect of luxation is same as before, sclerosis of the pulp, necrosis, and periapical lesion. Evulsion could give us the following radiographic signs. The tooth is lost and there would be a socket outline. So you have to look for the intact socket outline and if there is any fracture of the alveolar bone. These features are evaluated for the possibility of reimplantation of the tooth. In our case, the patient had reimplanted the tooth himself with some kind of success. So we can classify dental trauma as something that causes crown fracture, or root fracture, or alveolar fracture, or in combination of all these three. The root fracture could be horizontal or could be vertical. In our case, we saw a horizontal root fracture. So what are the radiographic features we saw? We saw a step deformity. So this is the step deformity. We saw sclerosis of the pulp canal. We also saw what appears to be internal or external root resorption. We saw separation of the root fragments. And then we saw widened apical pedial space of the right central incisor. In our case, we should check the vitality of the right central incisor. We may have to do a colored restoration and in our case, the left central incisor was already discolored, so it might require a restoration or a crown to improve aesthetics. You may also want to get a small field of view CBCT scan. The scan will give us information about the fractured root and the apical pedial space of the right central incisor. Luckily, Dr. Attar has shared with me a CBCT scan. So I'm going to show you briefly the findings on the CBCT scan. So here is a CBCT scan that Dr. Attar shared with me. 
This is a small field of view CBCT scan including the areas of the premolars to the premolars. This blue line represents the image on this screen. So I'm at this time I'm on the midline of the maxilla. If I scroll through this window, I can see that here is the separation of the fractured fragment. There is no pulp canal. We had wondered about the internal or external root resorption. And what I can see is on the palatal surface, there is some root resorption. So this would be an external root resorption. One more finding that we could not evaluate on the periapical radiograph is the relationship of the central incisor with the nasopalatine canal. So if we scroll through, this is the nasopalatine canal and here is the tooth. There is no periapical lesion. There is no disruption to the nasopalatine canal. If we scroll through, we see that this is the right central incisor. And that's the widening of the PDL space, not a definite sign of periapical lesion. There is no radicular cyst. This is the canal supplying the pulp canal of the central incisor. On the axial slice, which is here, we can appreciate that these two fracture fragment of left central incisor, they are separate. You can appreciate the pulp canals of central incisor and the lateral incisor, but we do not see a pulp canal of the left central incisor. So left central incisor pulp canal is sclerosed. Thank you very much. I'll see you again with another video.